This has become the place for rich people to stash their cash. You have a lot of rich people that live here that don't want to be known, don't want to be seen. The so-called Panama Papers are world leaders and the mega-rich hide billions of dollars. Helping the world's rich and powerful hide billions of dollars. This is crazy. It's the home of the first international Trump hotel. This used to be a Trump hotel behind me, but not anymore. It has a crazy story. But before any of this, Panama became a rich country over decades. Two checkpoints, you have security cameras everywhere. This in the middle of Latin America. Uh, it's grown a lot. So you have a lot of more like cultural offerings, a lot more buildings, a lot more stores. It's the first country to ditch its own currency and use US dollars. $56. The most expensive lunch I've had in two weeks in Latin America here at a Chinese restaurant in Panama. It's home of the only Waldorf Astoria in Latin America. But Panama has a huge wealth gap and become super American. If you want to see that kind of culture, you, you have to go outskirts now. This tiny country in Latin America has the same population as the state of Oregon. So why is Panama so rich? You see Dolce & Gabbana, Cartier, Ferragamo, Ferrari, Bentley, and super yachts. Everywhere I look, I see signs of luxury. On this street alone, I've counted about seven banks. And next to the banks, you've got major hotel brands from Waldorf Astoria to W Hotel. A lot of this money comes from the service sector. Panama is largely a service-based economy, so think banking and mergers and acquisitions. Its stock market is the biggest in Central America. Maybe one of the biggest signs of wealth is how many banks are in a city and how tall those buildings are. And if that's any indication, you see quite a lot of them here in Panama. And with a lot of banks and good paying jobs, you can expect to have nice and expensive homes too. I wasn't able to enter inside this area. It's a very high secure gated community where the lowest price condo will start at $1.3 million. If you want a couple bedroom apartment here, that's gonna cost you over $7,000 per month. Ocean Reef Islands are man-made islands. They were built about 10 years ago to fill demand of more luxury homes. You have a lot of rich people that live here that don't want to be known, don't want to be seen. You have two checkpoints, you have security cameras everywhere. That might be because Panama is considered to be a tax haven. But more about that later. Behind me you see three tall banks. This isn't something I would normally see going around Latin America, is multiple tall banks. I definitely feel like I'm in Singapore, not Latin America. Naturally, when you have so many big banks around, you're gonna have the luxury stores that follow, like Chanel and Louis Vuitton. But to understand how Panama got here, we need to go all the way back 140 years. Initially it became uh, as a hot spot because of the canal, because it connected both oceans for fast travel. We have a very good uh, geographic position that has allowed us to develop a lot of industries, right? Starting with the Panama Canal and everything that's connected to it. We're in the middle of the world, so it's an easy place to do business. The Panama Canal uses a crazy smart method of technology to allow ships to strategically go through the hills. They created gates that put water inside that make the ship float enough so it can easily pass through. And it's this canal that gave Panama the opportunity to be what it is today. I'm watching this ship right now go from the Atlantic Ocean into the Pacific Ocean. What's crazy is that this canal, this what I'm looking at right here, contributes to 10%, 10% of the total country's annual GDP. 12,000 of these ships coming through the Panama Canal every year. The journey is going to be about 8 to 12 hours, 8 to 12 hours to get from one side to the other. It's a really fascinating, complex process, the way these ships have to come through the canal. It's extremely narrow. It's crazy to think that this happens 12,000 times per year. This system is actually lifting and lowering the ships. It's quite fascinating the way it works because that is a huge depth. And as you can see behind me, this ship is coming in for it and it's going to somehow miraculously, using engineering, using technology, it's going to lower the ship to be able to go into the Pacific Ocean. Panama Papers has implicated as many as 12 current or former heads of state. Panama has now become a place for rich people to keep their money because its legal and tax structure makes it super attractive. Here, they have no income, corporate, capital gains, or estate taxes on offshore entities. So it became a hotspot for thousands. That was until 2016. It was the first time a leak of this size had happened. Millions of documents leaked, showing how people from the US to India are keeping their money in accounts to avoid taxes. Now, avoiding taxes is perfectly legal, but evading taxes, 
is not. At the center of this scandal was a firm called Mossack Fonseca, which had been doing fraud, tax evasion, and been avoiding international sanctions for some of its clients. Fonseca looks like a perfectly respectable company, but this is a business that's helped people from around the world break the law. Oh, this is all boarded up. I bet you this is where the, the main headquarters was. This was probably like a really nice headquarters. I'm guessing the sign was even here and now it's just completely boarded up. This is crazy, this is crazy. This used to be one of the biggest firms here in Panama and then after the Panama Papers came out, this is this is what happened, this is what it looks like. This is the exact address of where the headquarters was. Now it's hard to say if this was actually the entrance, it very well could have been, considering that it's now completely boarded up. It looks like it hasn't been used for a couple of years. Donald Trump's name came up more than 3,500 times in the papers, but he was not implicated of illegal activity. But his customers and partners were. Trump's hotel management company was evading income and social security tax. And I go to visit his old hotel. This used to be a Trump hotel behind me, but not anymore. It has a crazy story. In 2019, after the management company evaded taxes, the hotel had to close operations, but it didn't close entirely. And since that, it has been rebranded, renamed to JW Marriott. Today, there are still big plans for growth here in Panama. I've come to the old town here, and this is one of the most expensive areas for real estate when you look at square footage. So you have condos, you have hotels. They're actually opening a brand new Sofitel in a couple months just over here, as well as a brand new Hyatt. This is known as Panama City's Old Town, and it's super hip. You've got cool lounges, bars, sushi restaurants. This building behind me is going to be a Hyatt coming up very soon. But its future is not really certain. See, some people I speak with here bring up corruption. Panama ranked 111th out of 180 countries on the 2020 Transparency International Corruption Perceptions Index. I grew up with my culture, my Panamanian culture, and like the more you I stay in the city, I kind of like diminishes. If you want to see that kind of culture, you you have to go outskirts now because I feel like the city is pushing them out. While its wealth and luxury is certainly impressive, more development means that finding local culture is becoming harder to find.